So what's going on with the auction is that we're going to try to have a good time tonight at the banquet and, and uh, raise a little money for our SOL. So the items are across the way being inventoried and going to be on display throughout the day. So hopefully everyone's brought their items in to put into the system and everybody's going to be here tonight uh, to have fellowship and dinner and to uh, help get rid of these items that are here. And we've gotten several requests about the fellowship dinner, and we don't know that we'll be able to feed any add-ons, but we're going to go through our tally sheet today and see if we've had any cancellations and see how many we can squeeze out. So we do have a list of you guys who would like to go that were not originally signed up, and we'll be making an announcement later today if we can add those people in. So sorry, you know, we, we just can't jump the catering count at the last minute so we, we're going to do the best we can but we may have some people but everybody's welcome to be in that room whether or not you have the uh, dinner because you can drink and you can eat cookies and you can fellowship and you wait, wait around for the auction to start up which is going to be like a half hour into the meal so see you all there also lunch uh, today uh, judging from yesterday we, there's plenty so if you registered for the conference even if you registered late you're welcome for lunch so I got, I've got just a, just a couple of minutes before I introduce our first speaker um, so I wanted to yes I didn't get this on the schedule, so Mary, you didn't have it on the list. Um, there was some discussion. Those of you who were trying to get back to uh, the, D the thing, the, the other airport. What's the airport? DFW. DFW I was going to say it wrong. Um, the, there was some talk about like combining efforts to get out uh, tomorrow on and share a shuttle cost. Uh, they co it costs like $100 to get a van, and if even four of people can go down at the same time, that saves money over about any other way to get down there. So we're, there's a sign-up sheet, and you put it up at the front at the registration desk so you can just write down your name and, and a, a contact info and what time you need to be out there and we'll, we'll try to you know carpool out there with a shuttle so just letting you know that's up front and before I introduce the next guest I just wanted to share with you um, I mean our next speaker how I got connected with the National RSOL several years ago I guess it was eight almost nine years ago I sent an email because the National RSOL was the only group I could find online who worked on these issues. And I sent an email. I said, I notice you have a petition. Is there anybody on that petition from Texas? I would like to start a Texas organization. And they said, yes, there is, but we can't give you their information. It's confidential. So I said, well, send out mine. Here's my email address. Here's my phone number. Sure enough, I received a call from an attorney, most of y'all know Bill Habern. He was the first call I received. And he said, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but I don't think you're going to get anywhere, Miss Molnar. Because <laughs> people are real secretive, and they don't want to talk, and they don't want to be known, and they're staying in the closet. And, but I wish you luck. So every week I'd email him and say, oops, got three more. Hey, got two more. <laughs> and... Uh, a couple of years later, he came to one of our conferences and he said, Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> at this point, we have 700 people on our Texas Voices email list. If you are a Texas resident or have a loved one in Texas and would like to be added to that list to receive our updates, send me an email, give me a call, I would be more than happy to do that. So that's why RSOL was important to me. It was the first connection that I made. And being a state organizer, I get to be on their listserv and connect with all the other state organizers. So I get to learn a little bit more about what's going on in everybody's state. Janice, we sure have fun watching California. <laughs> I'm always sending out emails. Ooh, ooh Janice, you know. <laughs> Good job. <coughs> <Sick of it. laughs> And they do, California RSOL does have a website. Just Google it if you want to know what's going on. You can check their website. They've got a really informative website. 
Okay, so um, first speaker is um, Dr. Stephen Davidson. Intimidation, isolation, and instability are the social devices designed to destroy the quality life of the registrant. Family represents the positive pillar to survival. The family must prepare for the battle and they need good skills not to resort to acts of bitterness and resentment. <laughs> Family, in whatever form, is the key. Born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area, Dr. Stephen Davidson comes from a rich Christian heritage of ministers, teachers, and laypersons. Since the 1970s, he has been involved in several ministries. He has attended a number of college and universities, including the University of Arizona, University of San Francisco, Simpson University, and Golden State School of Technology. He possesses advanced degrees in administration and pastoral ministries, including a Master of Divinity and earned doctorate in Christian counseling. This will be the second time that Dr. Davidson has uh, spoken here for RSOL, and uh, we just love him so much, and we're glad he's back again. So I'd like to introduce to you our next speaker, Dr. Stephen Davidson. Thank you for that. Thank you for that presentation. Didn't know that I went to technology school, but it'll work. Oh, we're good. We're good. Thank you, man. Thank you for that. Good morning. Good morning. If you're happy and you know it. All right. All right. All right. Uh, to the RSOL leadership and uh, to the leadership, of course, of this church and to all of you who have gathered here today. This is actually uh, my third time. Um, I was there at the very first one in Columbus, Ohio, on the state capitol, speaking there in freezing temperatures. You hear me? It was freezing. And with the state troopers out and the horses and the protesters, You've come a mighty long way. That's nice, isn't it? But uh, we will never forget that experience and how uh, those persons who were there, how they stood through inclement temperatures. So this is actually my third time, but the second time here. And you did it again. You did what? You came to the Bible Belt, <laughs> and you dare be in a church house. <laughs> in that regard, there's no way I could stand here without a few words, please. Lord, we bless your name, and thank you for these few moments. Be with us now, over this whole conference. In the name of your darling son, Jesus, amen and amen. Um, the last two times that I came here, I was more in speaker mode, you know, just kind of speaking. But my calling is healing. My calling is counseling. You didn't recognize that you came to group counseling this morning, did you? <laughs> Everybody say, shush, baba. <laughs> Uh, in that regard, you know, I did take uh, real notice uh, to what I believe to be the topic here. Uh, that is one that is addressing the, the impact, the collateral impact. If I've got that right, correct me if I'm wrong about that. And uh, I don't stand here as an outsider. I don't stand here uh, as a person who has not and is not experiencing what you're talking about. Uh, in the guidance in my life, I believe that 
our lives have direction to them. Sometimes it looks like it's awry, but I believe that we have direction to our lives. And for me, I believe that my life is guided, and this is not by happenstance for you or for me. Uh, as difficult as the experience is, as gut-wrenching as the experience is, there is actually something redemptive in this experience. Amen. There is actually something in us being shaped. And that is a part, that is my testimony, as it were, in this experience. I mean, if I had to choose it, I would not be here. Anybody who would be here, if you could choose it? <laughs> but if I could choose, I wouldn't be here. But that's way above your and my pay grade. And since we've been dealt this, we have to deal with it. And we have to deal with it with dignity and with courage and with resolve and determination. Because it has been a gut-wrenching experience. So what do we do? How do we make it through? How do we persevere? Now, I happen to be the one who is collateral. It's not me specifically if you don't know the story. It is my son, 2003, in a park with a young lady. He doesn't know her age. They're just making out. They're just making out. All right? Police officer comes by, sees him there, calls him out. And from there, being a youngster, 19 years old, you know, like I say, you know, you know now, when you, you know how it is when you become a teenager. Everybody is nuts but you. <laughs> All of the knowledge is within the teenager. All right? I like to say, you know just enough to get yourself killed. So what a harrowing experience for him. He didn't recognize that, that, you know, the police officers, the system, the law is on your side. Because he's been taught that as a child. Honor authority. Notwithstanding what we see today, my children will honor authority. So when they asked him, tell us what happened, he wrote on a little paper, we were in the car, and we had our hands in our pants. And since that day, he's been a registered sex offender. He'll be here in just a few minutes. That's just the start. That was 2003. 2007, he was working uh, at a J.C. Penney's. He was doing portraits. And somebody there saw him and knew he was a registered sex offender spread his face all over schools, everywhere, that he was a predator, that he was this, that he was that. Can you imagine? Not only that, we'll talk a little bit about the counseling today. <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. And so it was like jointly. He was mistreated so incredibly by counselor combination of probation officer it was unbelievable unbelievable that this could happen to a kid I say that to share with you I feel you so I don't stand here today like I have not been collateral damage but I got a smile on my face it's all good you're crazy. <laughs> Somebody give a hand. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that today. I, I just wanted to give, for those of you who did not know, I did want to share that with you uh, as we move through these three extraordinary principles. As she said, you know, and one of them is certainly going to be family. Since we're talking about collateral damage, man, I tell you, there's no way. If you're in the family, 
So we're going to get, that's going to be one of those three principles that we share. So let's get going with it. I've got uh, some help back there, uh, technological help. <laughs> He's going to give me some support. Let's talk about the dynamics of collateral damage. We're going to do one at a time. I want you to describe, like I said, you go, we're going to go interactive here. Interactive. Not just, remember I said, no speaking type thing. I love interactivity. I will sit here on this floor if you don't respond. And then the whole conference will be thrown off. All right? All right, all right. Let's tell you, first one. Hit it one time for us. Collateral. What is that right there? It's a mushroom clap, typically from a, some type of nuclear device, right? What would be the collateral damage? Everything within, <laughs> everything within 22, everything from here to Louisville, Texas, if you're in this area. If not, uh, 22.8 miles. Could be a lot more, in fact. All right. Somebody said something about radiation thereafter. I mean, you're not going to be able to do anything with that land for quite a while. All right. What else? In the air. It used to be... Uh, you. Dropped a bomb, 20 years, uh, civilian military, uh, four veteran. It used to be you dropped a bomb, that's it. It hit, it explodes, but no more. Why? Because if it's nuclear, that radiation will be killing people for a long time. Can't do anything with it, right? It's collateral. Next one. What about this one? Anybody see that? It's in the middle of an ocean. It's an oil rig. It's an oil rig in the middle of the ocean. Okay. Somebody said fish, collateral damage. Shore. Our food supply. Food supply. Yeah, you like, we love that salmon with oil in it, don't we? <laughs> huh? Yes. Anybody else? Pollution. 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 Huh? Tourist, I mean, tourist trade, yeah. I mean, if when that oil goes like it did in the Gulf, when it goes, it's that's not good beach time, is it, folks? Fishermen's jobs. All right, very good. What did you say? Fishermen's jobs. Fishermen's jobs. That's the collateral damage. It's not like the oil just comes out and it's right there. It's going everywhere. It's impacting the whole ecology, is what it's doing, and economy as well, right? What about the next one? Now we can stay here for a year talking about this one, huh? Huh? Hits the top. What did you say? Fear. Fear. TSA came into existence. Legislation. Homeland Security. Yeah. Who works for the Department of Homeland Security? <laughs> All right, all right. Anybody else? Anything? Else? Uh, huh? Patriot Act. Patriot Act. Death. Death. Changing your way of life has completely changed who we are. It has completely. Man, it used to be a time you could go to the airport with your loved ones. I remember looking out the window as they flew off. I don't even want to go in there myself, and I'm flying. I mean, you violated, right? <laughs> Great. Correct? I mean, if you've been there, oh my goodness, it used to be a thing that flying was just such a pleasure. It is a headache. Absolutely. That is part of the what? Collateral damage. Not only, we could just keep going on. We could be here all day talking about the collateral damage from that right there. Fear is big. Fear is huge. Yeah. Absolutely. Fear, no, no, no doubt about it. So there you go, you've got all that. Hey, let's hit it again. <sighs> so, why do we have GPS guided weaponry in the military? Precision. Huh? Precision? Minimize collateral there, It is to minimize collateral damage. We, we want to be efficient with our targetry. We want to hit exactly the eye in a fly. See that window over there about 500 miles? I want this missile to go right through that window, go right in there, and get that person. Minimize. We're very concerned about collateral damage. Very concerned about it. All right, it's a hot political topic. 
you know, you hate to hear. How many of you saw um, Chris Kyle's movie? What was the name of it? American Sniper. How many of you saw American Sniper? How about the scene when he's sitting up there, he's got his, his weapon, and a woman and her son comes out. And you're just going, and almost everybody is going, what? <sighs> Why? About to hit that child. And of course, the child has what? Got like a bum. Oh my goodness. Isn't that just breathtaking? Isn't that breathtaking? Yeah. All right, why? Because we're concerned about collateral damage. We really only want to impact those persons who may do some harm. That whoever we're at, whoever the target is, that's what we want. We don't want anybody beyond the target. Is that a reality? Yeah, I mean, that's true. We actually are concerned about that. Yes, ma'am. You don't feel the government I, feels that way? I feel that way, but I don't think our government does. Look what they're doing with the, their stupid drawer things and all that. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I'm the, that's a military officer in planning sessions, planning attack missions. Mm -hmm. Generally, and this is just my experience, much of the staff will target and avoid cloud damage only to the extent that uh, the process and procedures do. Other than that, there, there really isn't a plan concern for cloud damage. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, we understand that. It, I mean, in other words, uh, you know, you have indiscriminate bombing like we used to do. Right. We don't it do it. It becomes a process that the military authorities and the political authorities state that you will not do this. Mm -hmm. The military, frankly, I, I, honestly, as an organization, doesn't care. Sure, 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 absolutely. Yeah. That's the reason why I use the term politics. And I can all day tell people offline why I can substantiate. Okay. And, but yet politically, it's a disaster. You agree with that? They, they do what the generals tell them to. Yeah, sure. And the generals do what the politicians tell them to. Yeah, exactly. Sure. But if you're a politician, you're concerned about collateral damage, <clears throat> right? <throat> if you're the decision makers, you're concerned about, well, we know war is war. But when it comes to those decision makers, it's not a good thing. Even though we know that's a reality, we're trying to not do that. That's the reason why the military, like I said, I've been a part of it for years. That's the reason why the military, when they're told things, doesn't make sense. Because the politics is driving it often. Okay? All right. Another one. Next one. Who are the most concerned? Who are we most concerned about in war concerning collateral damage? Who will we be most concerned about? Politicians. Oh, yeah. <laughs> about civilians and war, who, who is it? Children. Children. There you go. We would be concerned about children. We do not want CNN taking video, I don't care where it is, of children lying down dead. We just, we just don't want that. Well, because it's politically bad. Exactly. We, yeah, we did that. Yeah, war is war, but, yeah, but we don't want to get children. We don't want to see that. I'm kind of setting you up, right? Yep. Kind of feel it coming, right? Yep. You feel it coming? Yeah, you, you know, you kind of, you know, you know, you, you, you kind of feel that heat behind you. You feel it coming, right? Next slide, please. All right, so we're going to talk about these three powerful principles. And uh, the first is family. Aurelio Duarte is he here today by any chance? I thought he might he might be here today, but many of you, are, some of the of you in the local area, know that Duarte is suing the city of Louisville, which is right down the road here, within 20 miles or something. I live right adjacent to it. I live on the other side of the Louisville Bridge. And, uh, of course, I think it's 2006 uh, when he was jailed. Uh, he was caught basically in a sting operation. Uh, and um, it was actually the police in a sting operation, and he was soliciting uh, sex from a minor or something of that nature. He does his time. Uh, he comes out. And then he's trying to find a place to live. He's trying to find a place to live. And as you can see up here, uh, we took this out of the uh, Dallas Morning News, a direct quote. The Dwarfs said the total of the residency, residency restriction has been hardest on their children. And at that time, 2012, they were 18 and 13 at the time. So here's something that he has done but it's impacting the children. We're talking minor children. 
in many, many, many cases. And not only that, their colleagues at school and their peers end up discovering about their parents as well. And you talking about children at school with other children being knowledgeable that their mom or dad is on the registration, the registry. That's collateral damage, is it not? Yes. yes. All right. Are those children suffering? Yes. Absolutely. You mean to tell me that we're concerned about the children of an enemy? And as he says, hey, I serve my time. I serve my time. What is this? Why am I continuing to be impacted, me and my family? All right, next one up here. And so we have a picture of them, and they had to find just a little studio type, 275 square foot place with two beds in for them to live in. All because he's registered. Something he's already paid for is the point. You know, and of course, people, we know how we can be. Yeah, well, you know, that's his, that's his fault, and you know, the consequences. Uh, I mean, we can just go on ad nauseum with that. Next slide, please. All right. You know, over the time and the years that uh, we've had our experience with this thing, I've looked at, you know, legislation and what people are saying. And, you know, and it, it, it's, it's just sickening when somebody says, well, you know, we're a nation of laws. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. We're a nation of laws. All right. But you can have laws that are unjust. I mean, that's, you can't just take that and run with it. We're a nation of laws. You need to listen when people are trying to get your attention that something is out of balance. The law is inconsistent with what has transpired. So, it was lawful to take the Native American lands. Is it right? No. Next. What about women can't vote? Mm. I know you women are not going to have that anymore, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's more now. Yes. Women power. That's right. All right. And of course, enslavement, discrimination, yep. unto war, without any doubt, against the aged, against those who are disabled, race, sex. Name it. It's unlawful. It was, you, it was all right at one time. It was okay. All right? So just because simply something is a law doesn't mean it's just. And that's why we are here. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 All right. Next. So we want to talk about. Yes, yes. Supreme Court just came down and? in favor of gay marriage just minutes ago. Oh, is that right? The Supreme Court has spoken. He said he just said that. He said he just said that. So, she said that uh, the Supreme Court has just ruled that gay marriage is what it is. All right? Now, some of us, we're not going to like that very much. All right? However, whatever it is about that law, in terms of making the terms about the law... It does not mean that simply because something is law that it's correct. And that's the point that we are making. All right? Doesn't mean it's just. That's the very point that we are making. So now we want to get into this thing about the therapy of family. We have to start there because if we're talking about collateral damage, those are the persons in the example that we just used who are being impacted. And so in terms of family, you know, we have to, you definitely, uh, when you're going through this, there are some things that you truly need to be mindful of. Because it is poignant, it is painful when uh, a loved one has done whatever and you personally are experiencing pain from it. 
Okay? Whatever's happened with the love, but you personally are experiencing pain because of that. Family. All right? Your family is your family, your church, community, persons that you can engage. And by the way, when we were here last week, oh, excuse last week, yeah, right. It's like last week, time goes so fast. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that um, really stayed with me uh, from the last time that we met, I know it's accurate. I know it's true. I, I know that what that person said and those persons indicated. But very often, when you're a registered sex offender, you cannot go to church. You can't go. Well, we're going to fix that today before we get out of here. You watch. If you want to, you will be able to gather in fellowship. We're going to make sure that happens. That's one thing we're going to give you today. Okay? We're going to make sure that happens. So you tell your loved ones that they're not here today. We want to fix that. Nevertheless, family includes family, the church, community. It's so important. And, of course, remember my context is my son. All right. And so persons already knew him. They already knew that the way that they were trying to characterize him wasn't accurate. Okay, now I'm one of those persons, I believe. I'm, really, I'm just like this. My family will tell you this. Now, if you're wrong, you're wrong. Right? You're wrong, you're wrong. Okay? We're not going to try to get around that. Okay? But also, at the same time, you know, you know your son, you know your daughter, you know your husband, you know your wife, you know your loved one. And if they're, if they're a character, they're a character. You know what I mean by character, right? <laughs> All right? You've got to admit it. You've got to, you know, face that. But if you also know it was an incident, sometimes it was an incident. It was an error. Not a practice. It was an error. And even if it were a practice, we need to do what we have to do about that. But you distinguish. I mean, counseling, counseling thousands of people by this time in my life, and you distinguish when something is an error from when something is a practice. You know, I love to say in a counseling session, is that a practice or is it a mistake? Because it should make a difference. Would you agree? Yes. Now, some things can only be done one time without grave consequences. Is that correct? Yes. Without grave consequences. But the fact of the matter is, even in those circumstances, we will talk about what's available even in the most grave of circumstances. But your family, your church, your community, let your loved one know, I'm in with you. You going down? I'm going down. And we do. It's my son's right there, by the way. He's making sure. Okay? You go down, I'm with you. Because I believe in who you are. I know it was just a mistake and it's an error and we are friends to the end in this situation. I will be with you as long as you just do what you're supposed to, be honorable, we're in together. Hurt, pain, difficulty, gut-wrenching experiences, you name it, we're in. Why? Why would I say that as his father? Why would I say that as a family member, whatever? Because I'm standing against the injustice that I see. <coughs> so family. I love that. See that sheet, Shepard, that says? Can I get the same to hand them out to the Florida legislature? Because a lot of them should be wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> Unregistered sex offender. I got Dr. Uh, Dr. Carlin, belief therapy. Dr. Carlin, believe a very good colleague of mine. He said there's actually two kind of criminals, the ones that get caught and the ones that don't. <laughs> you need 160. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is when you collateral damage, we can wear a shirt like that as well. You know, so we're collateral damage. For collateral damage. Okay? The laws, the way that they're written, they're too broad. Broad stroke. 80,000 people in Texas, thereabout. More registered sex offenders in the United States than the United States military combined. As I expressed the last time. I said, now you know, 
based upon the publicity about sex offenders, just think about it. Just think about it. It's more than the United States military. If that's the fact, then the whole nation is being ravaged by sex offenders right now. <laughs> if that's true, if it's true what they're portraying, the whole nation, because it's enough in every day, 80,000 in Texas alone. So if that's accurate, the whole nation should be just being ravaged. But what we're seeing and what's in the public's ears, it's not true. The ordinances that are written are inconsistent. Yes. It's way beyond beyond. And it's not going to stay. It's not going to stay. You can clap your hands on that one. And I'm not just giving you poppycock. All right? All right, so who wants a t-shirt? Unregistered sex offender. All right, next one, please. Question. Yes, sir. The t-shirt, is it one size fits all? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got Give him the mic. Somebody give him the mic. Uh, <laughs> All right. So that is the therapy of family. Now what about the therapy of forgiveness? Forgiveness. Uh, I was sharing with you last year that in God's Word, Bible, that's me, my thing, you you're in the church, y'all. <laughs> when it comes to justice, justice, according to Jesus, must have a thing called mercy. It's not just if it does not have mercy. Now, what's this mercy thing? Anybody want to help me? What's mercy? Help me. Put y'all in a Sunday school class too, right? <laughs> well, what is mercy? Anybody? All right. Unmerited favor. All right, that's grace, it's unmerited favor. Just just a little bit of distinction, and we'll give that to you in just a moment. What did you say? Kindness. Did you say about mercy? Uh, mercy is you don't get what you deserve. You don't get what you deserve. You don't get what you deserve. I did something wrong, I'm given mercy, I don't have to bear under all that would the consequences because I've been given mercy. See, when people are self-righteous, they don't understand mercy. They even hold up the Bible. Guys, mercy is in there. Mercy. All right? And of course, grace means that you're given something. There you go. You're withheld from something, mercy, that you deserve in punishment. You're given something, grace, that you didn't deserve. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. See, that's, that's beauty. Now watch this. Remember I was telling you, he started going to the counseling. And uh, he would go to counseling. He would come back in year one. And one particular evening he came in and he was just crying. My wife and I, it's my wife, boy, my team is here. Uh, I'll make sure to get to you guys, but my wife's here. And we, he was just crying. Came through the doors. Never forget that evening. And we met him there. What is going on? What, what, what's wrong? And then he finally just revealed that every time he went to counseling, the counselor would just beat him down. Never a word of encouragement. Never any sense of forgiveness. Reminded him every time that he went there, he had to talk about the incident. Can you believe that? Yes. yes. <laughs> every time he went there, he had to recall the... When he told me that, I couldn't... I'm Mr. Christ-based counseling in this nation. I'm like, are you kidding? No, Dad. Every 
wait a minute, you go there 52 times a year, 52, and every time, mm-hmm. yep. mm-hmm. and all of them in there yep. have to constantly talk about exactly. what they did exactly. again and again. In detail. In detail. Mm-hmm. Somebody feeling me. She, somebody else know about that too? Or was that just our experience? Okay, I, I was like, what in, what is going on? It's about living in the past and not living forward. Oh. And you know what? I know what they're trying to do, but it don't work. It doesn't work. You can't sit there and just pound people every time they came in. How many of you would like to hear what you did every time? So think of something that you're really embarrassed that you did. We got plenty of it, right? Yeah. All right. And then if you don't have any of that, you need to go and be with Jesus right now. <laughs> but we got things that we have done that we're not pleased about. Right? We've got things we've done. We're not pleased about those things. All right? Could you imagine just every time you said something like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, you remember that, don't you? You remember that? <laughs> you remember that, don't you? Don't you know? You know, like, you would never, you will never heal. If that's the therapy, it's called reality therapy. Oh, William Glenn, more color. Yeah, you're, you're making it worse, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then you want you keep programming me like that. Guess what I'm gonna go do? Yeah. If you keep programming me like that, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I'll never be anything. I'm just that's what I am. That's what I always do. I'm incurable. You keep programming, saying that to me. I'm incurable. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. But the experts say contrary. Don't do this, and yet not have a standard of treatment on a national basis that we follow that we know works. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know it works. <laughs> All right. So reality therapy in your face. Face reality. Be accountable. Again. And again. And again. And again. And again. How many times can I say again? Next one. That's what they're doing. Now, most people know trying to render crippling guilt is not a good thing. Trying to remind me so much that I won't go and do it because I've been reminded so many times. Have mercy. Next one. The other part that I saw about it you put everybody in the same group, different offenses, different pathology. Some is not pathological at all. It was a youthful indiscretion. What, what are you talking about here? He put them all in the same place. And uh, one fits all, even if it didn't fit. And of course, to say, you know, once a sex offender, always a sex offender. Anybody heard that one? Man. So, what did I have to do? What did I have to do? Once I knew that, fortunately, it's not, you know, this doesn't happen to everybody. But once I knew that and I knew what was going on, then I had to start overcoming what was being done. Once I knew what they were doing to him, and so, oh, so, let's put a game plan together. All right? The first thing, just like I said, with my family, no, if you do something wrong, you admit, we did it wrong. That was wrong. We, we just didn't get that one right. Correct? Yes. Uh, and I mean, seriously, we didn't get that right. And there are going to be consequences for not getting it right. Are you with me? There going to be consequences. See, when you start talking about collateral damage, the whole thing about not getting it right, we know there are going to be consequences. But those consequences, just like with GPS weaponry, they need to be strategic, tactical, limited to the degree that we can make it. Correct? All right? But I want him to know, hey, you're redeemable, man. Hey, man, look, look. You know, this is the deal. You know, you went 19 years 
Nothing like that ever happened. You see what I'm saying? All right, now we're even going to deal with it even if it's a practice, but you went 19 years. I'm talking about from the context in which I have the experience. All right, and nothing like this has ever happened. Don't let them define you. Say, no matter even if it's pathological, but in your heart, in your mind, you want a difference. You cannot let that person, that therapist, define you. So the other thing I told him is, uh, hey, look, uh, you want to click the next one? The other thing I told him, all right, we're going to play the game with him. <laughs> kind of like in college, right? Tell them what they want to hear. But don't you, there's a difference between hearing and listening. <coughs> Right, wives? <laughs> I'm sorry, fellas, I threw you under the bus. <laughs> yes, sir. In the state of Virginia, I went to a mandated family counseling where mm -hmm. my, my, not my kids, but my wife was there. And you had to introduce yourself, no matter what your offense was, was, hi, I'm Philip, I'm a child, ladies. Wow. This was a family counseling environment, yeah. and you had to do this, or you could not exactly. through their process. Exactly. And get out of the exactly. Exactly. See, see what he, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That uh, would you say that a little louder for everybody? Well, I'm just saying it was a family counseling environment, and the only way to get through it, it was mandated. But you had to stand up and say, you know, your name, and you were a child rapist, no matter what you did. That's what you had to say. Right. You had to say it to get through the counseling. Exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, he wouldn't let you out of there. Yeah, um, how horrific, you know? I mean, we really, you know, you hear these stories. You know, and the, the thing that's really, really unfortunate about that to me is that it's the, supposed to be the therapeutic community. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, you know, the therapy... Exactly, exactly. It don't work. So, yes, sir, go ahead. Well, we have to understand that when we are in, in mandated therapy, we are not the client. That's right. The client are the victims. So how can I have a therapeutic relationship when I'm not the client? That's right. Yeah. So, in that regard, again, like I told him, let's just play the game. You go in there, listen, and I listen. I said, you hear Because like I said, there's a difference between hearing and listening. And every time you come back, I want to know what, what, what would happen. I don't know what would transpire. So you've got to play the game. You've got to play the game. You've been mandated to do that. You've got to go in there. But I'm telling you, some of that stuff is absolute from the pit of hell. Some of that stuff is so poisonous, it was, will not heal you whatsoever or anybody else. Yes, ma'am. Brother, you are speaking the truth. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll do that. Yes, sir. Actually, what you're talking about cost me almost ten years of mine <laughs> because I wasn't I wasn't just going to stop and listen to him. Let him do what I want here. Right. I kept battling with him. Yeah. I kept battling with my pro officer. I kept battling with exactly. my supervisor and said, "Hey, I got to get out of here because." This guy keeps beating me down, and I'm not going for that very much longer. Yeah. You know, then I wouldn't go. I wouldn't catch any charges. I just would not go. I yeah. I would report that we're doing that. come lock me up, and, and I've been years down there. Yeah. Way. Yeah, see, see, that's the thing. You know, I'm coming right to you. See, that's the thing. You know, I knew, you know, we, gotta, we, gotta, we have to beat this thing. And in order to beat this thing, you just got to play the game. You got to play the game. If you got to get your mind on something else when they're doing that talking, just do what they ask you to do so that you're not prolonging. You don't want to prolong the experience. Let me get him, ma'am, first. Yes, sir. Same thing in prison. You have to learn to play the game. Yeah. Even if it's death threats from fellow inmates. Yeah, yeah, yes. And it's, of course, the same thing in military. Same thing in life. You just really have to learn how to play the game. No. You know, when you're sitting there, he, of course, my son had the advantage of me as a father. All right, but we're going to have to fix that for everybody today. And you need to be able to share this, okay? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. I don't want to miss you. The, you know, the 
you know, I get the play the game, go along, do what you have to do. You need to stand up and, and say um, your name and repeat this phrase, whether that was your actual charge or not. What happens, um, at least our experience in Florida, is when these guys try to do these things and get through the program by playing the game, when it comes time for them to complete the program or go through things with probation or go back to court for, for post-conviction relief, this information is revealed and used against them and says, yeah, but in treatment you admitted X, Y, Z because you were compelled, it's compelled speech, that I have to say something in order to complete this program, but I'm leaving myself now liable that I can't protect myself in a court of law because you have me admitting to something I didn't do. So we have, um, I don't know about the other states and the mechanisms, um, I have had to be instrumental in helping uh, registered citizens get their treatment providers changed based on the protocol that was being used in that in that particular program. Right, very in, good. And the you know push with the probation because probation pushes these things. And in Florida, you can go to court and get and get your treatment changed. Yeah, it's a great point that she raises because very often in the programs you can choose to go to a different place. If you find that you know what is happening is uh, just really egregious, like he's pointing out. Uh, that you be careful about those things because a lot of times you probably just go into something that is local but there are other locations and so you might want to look around don't get caught not going but I mean you might want to look around and see if there's somebody because it's uh, it's not science let me put it like that it's not science you know uh, it is up <laughs> it is up to that that counselor they're just different approaches with different counselors so you may be able to find one uh, it's tough uh, if you're not like in a metropolitan area where you've got plenty of alternatives. It's going to be a lot tougher or if it's at a distance. Uh, so in those extreme cases or in those circumstances where something of that nature is happening, if you've got that option, just look for that other opportunity. Yes, ma'am. I just wonder if anyone's had any um, success getting treatment from the VA. If you can choose your provider, why does it have to be the state mandated provider, if you're a Vietnam veteran and you get free health care from the VA, why do you have to pay for someone when you can get better health care? Because you have to go to the It's very typical. Yeah. Typically, there's a relationship between the counselors and law enforcement. Yeah. It's uh, a district way. attorney, well, yeah, I mean, the whole system. But so yeah. you can't. But if the care, if, the, if you want to save people and you want to get a safe Well, ho, ho, ho. I'm just, I'm telling you reality. What you're saying makes all the sense in the world, but that's not the way the system works. You got to go to the providers that they tell you, that your probation system tells you that you may have some choices from those providers. So you just can't come to Dr. Davidson, you know, when you're under court supervision. You can't go to who you want. They just got these providers, and that's where you have to go. Yes, ma'am. I sound says he will never, ever admit to raping or molesting any child or any adult. Mm -hmm. He says he did not do it and he will not admit to it. And that's one fight he's having with his counselor right now because mm -hmm. he won't admit to doing anything like that. Well, and then your counselor is basically the, the, the basic, you know, I mean, everything in the system is you did it and I know you're going to say you didn't. Everybody's got a story. Now, we don't like that. All right. I mean, we don't like that. I'm just talking reality. That's just the way it is. You know, no matter, it, it just doesn't look at those circumstances. Yes, ma'am. Okay, folks, instead of going with the questions and comments right now, let's let Dr. Davidson get through his PowerPoint. And then if there's some time left over, then we can share with him. All right. Thank you for that very much. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Continue on, please. Uh, and we already said, don't let them define the truth about you. Okay? Uh, then, we say here that God forgives everybody who asks for forgiveness, which leads us to the next slide. All right, and the final one. Faith, the therapy of faith, it's what makes everything else work. Be it family, be it forgiveness, you got to have a foundation for that stuff. Now, I am only speaking from my perspective and what I have seen in numerous others. Let's take a look at it. How do you support a loved one through injustice? Just a number of questions here. How do you not get bitter and angry? 
how is it possible not to blame your loved one? You get into some type of, you know, just a difference of opinion, or it could be anything, a television program, anything, and then here you bring that up. Remember, we told you that. You can't, we can't do that. Can't take advantage like that. Well, now, nah, here it comes, finger pointing. Yeah, but if you hadn't done that, here it comes out. <coughs> if it's injustice, which we believe it is, all right, out of balance, why would you do that? Why would I do that? All right? Don't blame them. How is it possible to forgive them and not relive the incident? And all that we're doing uh, to make this possible, what makes this all possible? So here are your healing and PowerPoint. These are the things that have kept me as a person who is in that collateral position. Next one. Like we mentioned earlier, my basis is going to be a Christ basis. This is what holds me through the circumstance. If you didn't know that, just in case you didn't know that, this is what the Bible says. Everyone has sinned and fought. Everybody has committed error. Everyone has committed an error worthy of death. Next. I love this. If we confess our faults, he, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us of our faults and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. All. Name it. Name what it is. What unrighteousness? Pedophilia. Homosexuality. For those who believe that. Name it. Adultery. Fornication. Whatever. Oh, a murder. Charles Manson can be forgiven. Amen. Jeffrey Dahmer. <clears throat> Adolf Hitler can be forgiven. By the blood of Jesus, if he gave himself to it. I'm Jewish. Uh, she's Jewish, so we get it. She says she's Jewish, so we get it. Yeah. But I'm glad for that. Like I said, this is for me. This is my context. You put me up here. I'm talking about me. What's helped me through this difficulty? What's helped my son to know that no matter what they say in there, you're forgiven, son. It's not really about what men say. It's what about God Almighty says. Sometimes you feel awful lonely. But he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You may feel it, but you're never alone in your darkest moments. Give that to the preacher. Thank you. In your most excruciating moments. Don't you love that? I love it. That's the reason why I said I can be here. I'm just as pleased. My son's not back there a victim. He's a victor. Yes. yes, next. I love with Paul. I'm persuaded nothing can separate us from the love. Nothing. Sex offender registration cannot separate us. From the love of God Almighty. <laughs> and then this one has kept me, whatever the difficulty, whatever the struggle, that all things work together. That's why I say, no matter what happens, this experience shapes us. It shapes us. It makes us. It has made me a better person. It's made my son a jewel. You know what it takes to become a diamond? You got to go through some rough times. If you got the right focus, the appropriate foundation, you'll come out a jewel. I love it. Jewel. Then more than a conqueror. Oh, we need some, any conquerors in here? Any conquerors? Absolute conqueror. And I'm not just saying it. In Christ, nothing is impossible. 
we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. <laughs> next one, son, next one. Appreciate it. Well, we're going to stay here for just a second, like I told you. And I want you to know, this thing is not going to always be. I believe that. I walk in that. That this registration thing. In the, by the way, in the first presentation, I'm done here. Let's sit down. There's one of the things that I said. One of the things that that registration reminds me of is the system that will come one day when no one will be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. Yeah. yeah. Reminds me of that. Anyway, family, part of the therapy, power of forgiveness, faith, being sure of what we hope for, certain of what we do now. I'm certain this is not going to always be. I'm just on what? Not on air. Not on air. But on the God in whom I believe. God, he called me to this. Next. All right, I'm sorry. I'm going to go back just one. Some of you, like I said the last time, every Thursday I have a conference session. You can put that number down. Every Thursday, 7 p.m. Central, we call it Amazing Things. And we meet, telephone. And uh, it's not just instructional, but it's really a fellowship of us around the word of God for those of you who see that that would be strengthening to you. It's phone conference. There's the phone number right there. And you can just call in. It's not heavyweight. Uh, my staff here, Counselor Beverly, she's back there. Raise your hand, Bev. She's on there always with me. Dr. Denise, another associate director in the ministry in our many A3Cs. My wife, I'm kind of catching up now. I don't, make, I don't get beat down when I go home. There she is right there. My son Tim is there. With the Association of christ Based Clergy, Counselors, Educators, and Educational Systems, A3Cs, we're the nation's leading christ Based ministry. And so, again, that is the number. We're there on Thursday nights just in case there's somebody you want to be strengthened. You want counseling. You want information. Yes, ma'am. Specifically for registrants and their families, or is anybody? Anybody can call. Mm -hmm. Just call in, and uh, we usually just uh, we just talk about what we've got there in Scripture, basically. But then again, but there's also in cbcentral.info. That's the Christ Based Counseling Hub. cbcentral.info that has we got about 22 websites. Um, uh, so. You know, you can you can get in contact with us that you can get in touch with the like, by the telephone because, like I said, the last time I was here, there were persons who said, you know, I can't attend a church. I mean, you know, and I would agree there are going to be places that you can't attend, but you can be with us. Are you? Are you um, manning that call? Yeah, I'm on there every every Thursday. We kind of uh, I'm there every Thursday to answer your question. Mm -hmm. We just facilitate. We just talk. Uh, again, it is this center of it is God's word is the Bible. The center of it, okay? All right. Other than that, I, any other questions or anything else? No. Yes, ma'am. It looks like there's two phone numbers up there. Which number is the call-in number? All right. The call-in number is 302-202-1110. Okay. Then you have to have that passcode, 807-512. Okay. Everybody, you would never be rejected from this ministry. No. Never. Yeah, never. All right? See that the other phone number is just uh, the uh, desk number phone call. Is that what? Uh, it'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, call the phone number three zero two two zero two one 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 zero, and then it's going to say put in your passcode eight zero seven five one two, and you'll come right in. That's every Thursday night, seven o'clock central. All right. Any other questions or anything? You're great. If not, I love you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Just keep fighting the battle.